brethren. I'm going to speak on the same topic that Brother Dan did. And whenever I was preparing this, I was planning on preaching the sermon. But God decided that it would be better for me to affirm the sermon. So I'm going to affirm what Brother Dan has already spoken to you. So the topic was the effectiveness of the gospel when it was mixed with faith. And the text again is Hebrews 4, 2. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So I wanted to start out with, with showing you the magnitude of the gospel. Romans 1.16 tells us that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. That, the work of salvation, is a huge work. And the gospel is the basis for that. And the gospel is a lot bigger than some think. I've, I've found that to be true whenever I was preparing this. The gospel is the tool that God is using to work out salvation. 1 Thessalonians 1.5 says, For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance. The gospel also brings blessing, as Romans 15.29 tells us and hope, as Colossians 1.5 says. The gospel is so great and wonderful, and it brings so many benefits, and now the writer of Hebrews has told us that we can profit from the gospel when it is mixed with faith, and it will effectually work in us. The gospel is like an, an active ingredient. Almost all the references to the gospel in the scriptures have to do with it doing a work and accomplishing something. The gospel is like the enabler. Christ Jesus opened up the way for the will of God to be accomplished, and the gospel is the message of that. It is the power. Now, faith enables us to be able to step into that power. Faith makes us compatible with the gospel, and it enables us to reach out and take hold of things that our natural man wouldn't be able to reach. Without faith, the gospel is out of our reach and it'd just be flying over our head. In 2 Corinthians 4.3, it says that the gospel is actually hid to those who are lost. But we have access to the gospel through faith. Another way that I thought about it is that since the gospel is so large and powerful, that with all the implications that come with it and the blessings that it brings, that we wouldn't be able to take it all. So it would just overwhelm us and we wouldn't really be able to profit from it. But faith will kind of channel it down so that we can receive it and it can really work in us. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith will lift us up to heavenly things that we are hoping for and spiritual things that we don't see. When, when faith brings us up to these things that we never before would have perceived, we can believe them. So believing comes through faith. Now the gospel will do nothing for us if we do not first believe it. That's why we absolutely have to mix the gospel with faith. The Romans 1.16 text that I mentioned says, The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth and to only those who believe. Right. To someone that doesn't have faith, who actually can't believe these things, the message of what Christ did will go in one ear and right out the other, and it won't do anything for them. But God has blessed us with faith and the ability to believe these things so that we can understand and be blessed by the gospel. Amen. Amen. Now, there are a lot of things that we do by faith, and this is definitely one of them. And Ephesians 3, 6 says that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Now, this, the gospel is why we get the promise. This is what we're living for, to obtain the promise. And the gospel is why we get that. It's doing a great work in us, brethren. Now, there's no way that the gospel will do its work in us if it is not mixed with faith and if we don't believe it. The gospel is the message of what Christ did. And in a sense, we're going down the same path that Jesus did. 
because we're living in this world that's opposing us and it persecutes us, but we have a hope of being with God. So the message of how Christ did that will lead us to the same place that he is. Then when we, when we believe it, it's like we're getting on board and the gospel is going to take us to be with God. If we don't believe it, we don't get on board and guess what? You aren't going anywhere. So let's, so let's continue in this way. Continue to believe the gospel. Now the mixing of the gospel and faith is not a once mixed, always mixed. The result of mixing is belief every time if you're truly doing it. But it's a conscious work that you will do continuously. There's no auto mix option either. You can't just set it on your calendar to mix the gospel with faith every, every week and you're good. You, you have to do it the way that God has, God has made it this way. This whole process is the result of God's plan working perfectly. There's no room for anyone to exploit the gospel. No one's going to get away with laziness in the kingdom. You have to do something. You have to believe and do something about what you hear before you get any benefit from it. The text says that the word was preached unto them as well as it was unto us. But it didn't profit them because they didn't do anything about what was preached to them. This is not an optional thing if you want the benefit. Now the, the topic is the effectiveness of the gospel when it's mixed with faith. This is not just a static message. It's taking us somewhere. The verse after the text, Hebrews 4.3 says, for we which have believed do enter into rest. The gospel is taking us to that rest and we can experience some of that rest while we're here and then we'll experience the fullness of it when we get there. Amen. Now rest is not what people, most people think it is. It's not an inactivity. Rest is a state that someone is in, not an activity that someone does. That verse 3 says, again, For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. So this is God's rest that we are going to enter. In this chapter, the writer is making a parallel between the Jews who did not believe what God said in the wilderness and in turn did not get to enter the promised land and people who do not mix the gospel with faith and don't benefit from it. The thing that's likened unto this rest is entering Canaan. Now Canaan was rest compared to the slavery that the Israelites were in, but there was still work to do for them. They had to grow their food and to continue in the way that God had set up for them. But that was rest. We will enter into God's rest, but is God inactive? Heaven is our promised land, and like Canaan, it is prepared for us, but there is also a work waiting for us to do there. Luke 19, 12 and 13 says, He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. Right now, we're in the occupying stage, waiting for our Lord to come. Then in verses 15 through 17, it says, And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him to whom he had given the money, and that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said unto him, Well done, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, thou shalt have authority over ten cities. When our Lord comes again, our work will be tried, and if it stands, we will be rewarded, and we will enter into that rest. The reward that the servant got was to rule ten cities. And it doesn't sound 
to the flesh, like that would be rest. But it really is. There is a work for us to do in glory. We might not know what it is, but it does make, but does it really make sense to say that God sent his son to die on the cross and to take away sin? Now he's giving us all we need here in this world to live godly lives and to please him. And then he'll take us to be with him so that we can all lie down on the sofa and do nothing for eternity. Does that sound like something God would do? I don't think that sounds very good. I wouldn't want to do that. But we will enter into the productivity of God's rest for eternity, and the gospel is effectually working in us to that end. So I encourage you, brethren, to not grow weary and to keep believing, and we will reap the benefit that the gospel is working in us.